Okay, so we talked about setting Buck up uh, off camera for success. Now what a lot of people do is they let their dog have access to rooms where there are things that are irresistible for dogs to chew on and they get in the habit of chewing on shoes or couches or carpet or whatever it is. So if you have the ability to give your dog a play den area with a wire kennel or a gate around it that only is filled with appropriate chew toys, that's what they get into a habit of chewing on. If you let them out in the house, it's okay under supervised conditions for very short periods of time, but if they start chewing on your carpet and all the rest of the stuff, it starts forming habits. It's much easier to raise the dog the right way without developing these habits in the first place, which is why it's so powerful and beneficial to have a play pen like, uh, like he has. So what I, uh, what I like to do is we call it enrichment when we put things in an environment for an animal to be stimulated. So for dogs, we wanna make sure we have plenty of appropriate chew toys. Now for a puppy, we wanna have stuffed or plush toys, uh, squeaky toys, uh, uh, toys that make a crinkle sound. But I do not, and I've seen some people that give their dog plastic bottles. I was just actually at a, my dog's, uh, my puppy's socialization class, they were talking about letting the dog play with uh, plastic bottles. If it's not an appropriate chew toy, I don't want my dog playing with it. He can't tell the difference between a chew, empty chew bottle that is a play to up bottle and a bottle of 409. And so your dog can get into trouble. I don't want them to develop a bad habit. So just because the shoe is destroyed, he can't tell the difference between that and uh, Manolo Blanco or however you say, I'm not sophisticated enough to know that. But um, Manolo Blahnik. Manolo, Manolo Blahnik, there we go. Not that I have. Uh, so now I'm a little bit more cultured. So um, we wanna, now you can put things like that in your dog's area and give them access to it and disagree with them and they show interest. And then as soon as they sit down or ignore it, then we can give them a treat and say, leave it, ignore, come up with a specific command for that. That way we're actually teaching them this object to be left alone. But at this age, uh, he's 11 to 12 weeks old, we wanna just get him to have no chewing on proper things. Now, um, I like nyla bones that are rigid. You can have a nyla bone that has a little bit of flexibility for a puppy, but once they start chewing pieces off it, I would remove those from the play area. Um, I also like to have um, um, carrots, which we talked about a little bit off camera, but carrots are a great thing because the dogs can ingest them, they can tear little pieces of them off. The baby carrots are pretty, dense so it gives them a lot of time and then later on when they're teething we can have them in the freezer give them to the dog and they can chew and eat them and numb their gums at the same time now one of the last things i want to talk about are treat dispensing toys which i get on amazon and uh one of my dog's favorite ones it's a ball about this big and it looks almost it's orange or red it has some dimples on it, it almost looks like an oversized golf ball and it has a hole in it you can dump the food in there the dog nudges it when he nudges it just right some a uh, couple pieces of a kibble will fall out of the hole, he eats it. So I am a big believer for a puppy of not feeding the puppy out of a bowl for the first for a month at least of its life. I want them to earn their food. Dogs in the wild spend 90% of their time looking for food. So when we provide it in a nice neat little bowl, they're like, great, what do I do for the other 78% of my time? So by giving, making them work for it, we make them feel better about themselves, we give them a self-esteem boost, and we give them, make them take a little bit more time so I like to have three or four of these toys that I put the food in. Now, if, you, if it has, if you have really little kibble, it's okay, but sometimes these things will have a hole like this and they'll have, I'm gonna do it on top, but it'd be underneath a nub here, a nub, there's usually four nubs that keeps the kibble from running out just like water. Um, Tara, my other apprentice, noticed that my dog Quest was lost interest right away because none of the kibble would come out. So she took one of those tabs out and it made it easier to come out. So we wanna start the dog off so it understands the concept of it. I have a little blue ball that's translucent that I can put them in. I have the orange one. I have one that looks like a dumbbell that's plastic that has a hole on either side. So I fill up in one, he's gotta flip it over. I've got one that's kind of a pyramid. He also has to flip and, and change the orientation. It's kind of a problem solving deal for dogs. Now, if you have a treat dispensing toy, the classic one is the Kong. Uh, make sure that there's a hole on both sides. If this is the toy, there'll be a, a, a hole on this side. A lot of times, if there's not a hole here, the dog can actually get his tongue stuck in this, create a vacuum. So always make sure there's a second hole. Sometimes they'll have multiple holes. Um, and there are different ones. There's one that looks kind of like a, a bobber, um, like a, a fishing bobber, and you can unscrew it. Yeah, these are, yeah, so these are a couple examples. This is a Kong, this is the traditional one. And again, you can see a hole here and a hole here. This is like a pacifier, but we can also put uh, peanut butter stuff in here. Now this hole is so big, if I put regular kibble in, it would just come out right away. So these are good for like peanut butter, or you can put their treat in water, let it sit, and it becomes like a paste, like mashed potatoes, you can stuff it in there. 
But the other ones that I'm talking about, the hole's gonna be much smaller and it's gonna have to move it around quite a bit in order to get it. I also have one that looks like a star and it lands flat and they have to spin the top and then it opens up and this little star thing that's covered now has little bits of, uh, of food in it as well. So I would get about four to six of those and, mar and vary those up. The other nice thing about that is the more they play with the toy, the more food comes out of the toy. Well, that creates more of a desire to play and interact with these toys. And, and if I chew on the furniture, I don't, if, if anything, I get stuffing, but I can't eat the stuffing. So there's not a much of a benefit for the dog. And again, the main thing is we want them to get a habit of eating the right thing. So feeding your dog out of uh, uh, those uh, sort of toys is great. Now, one little caveat. When your puppy is small, it's probably not going to do it. I did this with my adult Dalmatian. He decided just to rip one of them in half so that he didn't have to nudge it around. He just let it all come out and ate it at once. So once your dog gets to a certain age, these would be maybe something you put in for food time and then pull away once they're empty. So this is a little video on enrichment and how we can entice our dog to play with appropriate chew toys and not chew the wrong thing.